Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and another episode on my flood damage Porsche 968. In the previous episode, we installed these brand new headlights. We did a bit of polishing on the inner side of this fender. And I also rebuilt the light clusters for the rear. If you missed that episode, I'll put a link for you up above and you can catch up. Coming up with a game plan for the next couple of episodes on this car was a bit of a tough one because I really want to continue the work on the interior. As you guys remember, we have all the carpets installed, the rear benches installed. So we're pretty much ready to get the dashboard in and to get all the switches back in and to start testing the electricals. But if I want to do that, I want to be able to test the lights. And if I want to test the lights, ideally, I want them to be back inside the bumpers. So initially, I had this idea that I'll do the bumpers when I do the detailing. But I think I need to take the bumpers off now. Even though it's cold outside, I think I can still clean the car in the garage. I don't have to have a pressure washer because I'm not expecting... A lot of real problems that I can't wipe away or blow out with a steam cleaner. So that's what we're going to be doing in this episode. I'm going to take off the front bumper. I'm going to take off the rear bumper. We're going to clean them and we're going to put them back and get the lights back in so that we can say this bit is complete. That's the game plan. Let's hope I get that all done. So sit back, relax and uh, let's start working. So one of the things I said in the previous episode I would do is to remove these uh, rear uh, license split lights. And as you can see, I have them off the car and they are here. So even though they look quite bad, I think they will clean up very nicely. There's no real broken anything. It's just uh, green and salt. So we'll get this cleaned up. Um, and then I want to get the harness out of the bumper again to get these guys off because I can't really pull it through there. I'll damage the uh, rubber. So I think this has to come off as a unit. So I need to figure out where it's plugged in underneath this bumper or inside the car. So let's start by taking off this rear bumper cover. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I need to remove this little screw that's holding the bumper to the back of the body here. Oh no. So the problem is inside there is a security nut. It's different from the ones that you see there. These are just normal six sided nuts. This one has all kinds of teeth in it. Usually the female part for that sits in the toolkit, but I've looked in the toolkit, it's not there. And I've looked in the box where I threw all the things that I found in the car, it's not there either, which means I have a problem. I can't get this wheel off. Now, um, it looks like the most common way to get it off is by taking an 18 millimeter socket and hammering it onto that security nut and then turning it off the car. Um, I could do that. The only problem is that the only 18 millimeter socket I have is from a very expensive brand and I'm not really keen on destroying that socket. So um, if you guys have any advice as to how to get that off without hammering a socket onto it, I'm happy to try it and if not then I will go buy a cheap socket that I can break but for now I think I'm going to try and get to that screw without taking off this wheel. So I've now got the 10 bolts that house the sides of the bumper to the body removed. So I'll just show you where they are. There's one at the top there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So that, that's five for the left-hand side. And then also five on the right-hand side. One there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So inside these holes, this one, that one, and then the mirror on that side, there are four nuts holding studs onto the body. Um, you need to loosen them 
up a little bit you'll find that they go weird on you so they feel like they are rotating but that's because there's a metal clamp that holds the bumper onto the car so just loosen them off slightly that'll just give you a little bit more wiggle room with the bumper as you pull it off as you loosen them you'll find that they start becoming a bit wobbly and, and... there you go you can hear that can you hear that so that means that the bracket is loose that's as far as we need to go and we'll do the same for this side Inside the taillight bucket, there's a hole at the top. Inside here, there is a nut. So this one we have to take off. There's one on the other side as well. And then the last three bolts, this one, this one, and that one, is what holds the underside of the bumper cover to the actual bumper. So I'm just going to remove these guys and then we should be able to pull the bumper from the car. It's looking good. All right, so I guess that's just Murphy's Law, but um. I wanted to show you how we pull it off the car. Uh, in the end, this was super straightforward, so it was not difficult. Um, I just had to make sure that I that I pulled the bumper around the uh, edges there. It's it's very pliable, so that was not an issue. And then it basically came loose. It was fairly straightforward. The only thing I didn't do properly is that I did not disconnect the license plate lighting and the lock mechanism, but uh, it was easy to do once I had it in my hand because it's not very heavy. So um, make sure when you guys do it, just connect, disconnect your license plate lighting here. And this guy here is the lock mechanism that sits inside the uh, bumper. But um, as you can see, it's not too bad. I think I can actually clean this really well. I'll take off the actual bumper from the car and I'll wash that outside. But the rest, this is stuff that's easily cleanable with a rag and some warm soapy water. So we're going to take this guy off. I'm going to get some warm water and then we can start cleaning off this whole area. That's filthy. So I've got the bumper cover down here on the floor and I've got the actual bumper against the wall over there. So what we are going to do be knowing now is I'm just going to clean up this mess that I've already created, start vacuuming as much of this junk off the car as I can, and then we'll start washing. So the inside of the bumper is now nice and clean. I'm not looking for pristine down here. I'm just looking for all the mud to be gone. So um, I'm happy with where I'm at. I'll rinse it a couple of more times. But what I'm also going to be doing now is just putting off this uh, bead because it's rock hard and I've got new ones on the shelf. So these guys will go off and then I'll flip it over and then we'll clean the other side.
right, so the bumpers are nice and clean. It was quite a messy job, but it's done. And it's uh, you can see it's looking really, really good. I actually think that this bumper was repainted at some point. And if we go over here, we can see that this real bumper has also been nice and clean. Even on the inside, you can see all the mud is gone. And that really was just my goal. I just wanted to make sure all the mud is out of this thing. So uh, with this clean and the bumper clean i've also managed to clean the wiring harness for the number plate lights so this is ready to go back in and the lock mechanism has been cleaned as well and then the surround for the lock mechanism is also nice and clean so all of this is ready to go on and that means it's time for us to get everything back on the car couple of spots on the car um, at the back here where something seems to have rubbed through the paint and I think this is the rear light bucket so what I'm going to do I'm just going to paint this up with Brunox epoxy primer to make sure that this is neutralized and also here where the bracket sits you'll see it's just gone through the paint a little bit so I'm going to just touch that up and make sure that we are okay that we're not going to get any rust issues down the line <music> What you saw here is a piece of silicon that someone pushed into the bead. Um, this is done because obviously the rubber gasket doesn't look so good after a while and people think that's the way to solve it instead of just spending the 20 or 30 bucks it costs to buy a new bead. But we're going to make this better. So the last thing I have to do before I can get the bumper cover back onto the car is to install a new gasket and I'll show you what it looks like. It's basically a round tube with a thing stuck on the bottom and if I can get focus on this we'll see this is a bit of a ribbed little thingy. I don't know what you call that little thingy and it has to be pushed into the groove that we have all around the bumper. It's a little bit of a fiddly job. It's not difficult. It just takes a while. And once that is done, we can start building up the rest of the bumper onto the car. So what I'm doing is you can see the little ribs there. I am taking my uh, pick and I'm basically catching one of those ribs and just helping it into the groove. The part came from Porsche with a very flexible piece of metal. Now I don't know if this is supposed to be put into here and then being to be pushed on. I tried that. I tried various other techniques. It didn't really work for me. So in the end, this technique with a pick and just grabbing that ribbed edge and just helping it into the groove and then working it in is what works the best. Um, you have to have patience. Um, I've now done, I would imagine, about a meter and a half of this. I've been at this at least an hour. So um, take your time and you'll get there. And uh, we're almost done. Just this headlight bucket left to go down there. And then we can get this guy back onto the car. Now that the bead is installed, I have also reinstalled the brackets or four of them you can see them hanging here they are loose they are not tight they are just hanging on the body so now we'll bring the bumper and i'm gonna hook it just onto these little brackets and hopefully it'll hang in its spot and then we can start bringing in all the rest of the bolts and nuts
so I'm just tying a string around the number plate light so that I can easily pull it through the hole once the bumper is installed because it's just a little too short to put through the hole now. Also making sure that the uh, lock mechanism plug is through the hole and then we should be able to just coax it onto, onto the, there we go. Looks like she's semi on. I'm okay with that for now. Good. With the bumper hanging on the brackets, I am now going to reinstall the bolts that goes there and there. And as you can see, I've ordered some new gaskets, some new rings. The bolts are the same, but uh, they are still in good nick. So I'm going to get these guys in. And then once that's done, we will start pulling up the brackets that's holding the bumper at the top here. So now that I've got the rear um, clamps reasonably tightened up, it's the game to try and line up the bumper to the body line. Um, it's a little bit off. You want it to have a smooth transition. This one's a little bit proud still. I think that works well. Yes. So now we've done that. We can tighten this up. Now we have to get this little plate to go into this hole and so that we can put the rear stud. Yes, that's on. So it's a bit of a fiddle, but uh, we'll get it. Now we've got to get this guy onto the stud. Like that. And there we go, a fully restored rear. I expect all of this stuff to work once I start testing the electricals. But as you can see, we didn't get to that front bumper. I promise you we will get to that in the next episode. And if you've watched this far, thank you very much for supporting my channel. And if you are not subscribed and you like these kinds of builds, consider subscribing. It really does help me out. Until next time, goodbye.